Friday the 13th part 7. The new blood is honestly the worst one. This is probably my least favorite. The movie's bad. This is the first bad one. As to why, it has the same feeling as the first one. Well, it's definitely not the same movie. It's basically Carrie versus Jason, but it has the same like sort of feel to it, I guess, but just much worse than the first couple of movies. But I'll give you that when I get to that. This is the one you've been waiting for. What's happening to me? Your psychokinesis and these delusions are no, He's waiting. Friday the 13th, part 7. The new blood. Uh, during the film, Kane Hodder, yeah, this is Kane Hodder's first role as Jason, and Ricardo was the best, you know, Jason actor. I'll agree to an extent, but I don't know. I'll get onto that. But Kane Hodder dressing room was a quarter mile down a dirt road. One night, filming ended at 2 a.m. And while still in Jason's costume, he decided to walk through the woods on a path to his dressing room. As he walked to someone, approached him, and asked if he, he was with the movie. He didn't reply because he thought it was a pretty stupid question to ask. He was standing there in full Jason costume. When the man asked again, Kane took a little lunge at him and grunted. The guy took off, tripping and running. Next to the director, John Carl, John Carl told Kane that the local sheriff was supposed to stop by but never showed. That's funny. A little funny story, I guess, of Kane Hodder just kind of, you know, having fun, being in character, and being like, I'm gonna scare this random ass dude. Why the hell not? I thought that was hilarious. I will say, Kane Hodder does add like more grunting and breathing. I will say, right? I get why people love him. He just adds like a lot of breathing and like just grunting, basically. And he is very imposing, too. The director John has publicly fumed over many times about the number of edits required by the MPA to avoid the X rating. The film had to be submitted nine times to the MPA before being granted an R rating and it stands as arguably one of the most heavy censored entry of the, of the series and it is this movie is censored to death the MPA butchered the shit out of the kills in this movie there's only one ki two kills that I like and this is the sleeping bag one which everyone knows but was, was a bit more bloodier the horn and the eye to the black girl kill both were like good and decent the other kills were just butchered or cut out and it sucks and you can look at these like, extended like kills on YouTube and it looks cool I don't know if that box it has has it but man it, it was not a good time not, and not only that i guess i could tell us why i didn't like this movie not only that acting was way worse than the actual bad acting in the previous movies in the previous movies the acting was like bad but it was like funny bad or just okay this is worse this is honestly bad mainly because the our main protagonist and final girl tina right she, i don't think she can act she feels stiff and she you know maybe she's her first time acting she's very nervous i get that and she feels a bit stiff in my opinion and the other actors they don't help as well they're some are okay but most of them are bad the mean girl i do like her because she is the mean girl and i'm just waiting for that moment for jason to kill her and she doesn't get killed not only the mpb messing it up the acting but i think that's it hold on there's something else i didn't like the ending as well and carrie nah, how's about to say carrie and tina as a character overall not interesting i, I don't know maybe the script part of the script was her to be kind of somewhat useless until the very end but and that ending oh, okay did that stupid ass ending but this is getting all these facts this one was originally intended to bring jason and freddy krueger together on screen for the first time how However, in Paranormal Pictures at the time had the rights to the Friday the 13th series and New Line Cinema held the rights to the Nightmare series couldn't agree behind the scenes and script was rewritten pit Jason up against a telekinetic Tina Shepard instead or to carry be honest be carry so yeah I guess around this time they had a talk between Paramount and New Line to be like let's have Freddy vs Jason and this is the first of the talks basically John was impressed that Ken Hart actually ate live worms on the set of prison in 1978 so he pushed for Paramount to cast him as King uh, Jason fuck your boy Ken Hart I heard just eating fucking worms huh he was that dedicated to be in prison huh that box set doesn't have god damn it any hopes of the, a complete uncut version of the film being released were dashed when it was revealed that the footage no longer exists as paramount destroyed all the outtakes why would you do that oh these kills would have been so good there's a few still out there but it's been deleted out of existence otter's costume and hockey mouse was warm and it was owned by the friday 13 proxy museum on my mario kinner i will say the look of jason this is part of my favorite look of jason you see his bone behind him and the meat and skin coming off everything's torn about him his mouth looks his whole head is dirty and, he and by the way this movie he's carrying a fucking like guarding tools he he brings out like a guardian thing grass thing out of nowhere just confirming that he wants to be and grow up to be some like garden person or something but yeah the look looks awesome this is part of my favorite look this one's is the longest jason appeared on screen unmasked yeah when tina or carrie aka carrie breaks his mask it shows his face that looks good as well the prosthetic on jason's face looks amazing again this movie had everything except for the kills and the acting i would have you know accepted it if it was a good kill but it's not the case with bad acting and no good kills it was a slog and boring off oh, i actually didn't notice every death takes place at night that was i didn't even notice what the fuck 
fuck? That was just like a random little fact there. Apparently, every day is death. So, I guess it's a mess up a timeline even more. This film takes place in the flashback in 1991, of October 13th, and then in the present day, September 2001, which messes up the timeline mainly because the clothes that I wore in are still the clothes from the 80s and not clothes from the 2000s or even like late 90s, which is hilarious, honestly. When I looked at this up, I was like, 2000? Yeah, not wearing 2000 clothes. Oh, I guess this is, this is kind of funny. According to several people associated with the production over the years, this film has acquired the nickname Fry Gay the 13th due to a number of casts being openly gay, including Kevin Spiritas, Susan Blue, Jeff Bennett, Craig Thompson, and Willem Butler. I mean, I guess that's a little funny behind the scenes backstory of like five of the, the cast being like openly gay. So that was a fun fact I saw there. So apparently, Willem Butler saw a rough cut without music or sound effects and almost had a heart attack. He attended to finish over the print and was relieved. Wait a minute, so what, did he think that that was the actual film or something? Or was the film that bad that was like, shit, I'm gonna look bad in this film or something? That was funny. Tina Shepard is the only female that Jason has faced out who has special ability. Yeah, well, this was meant to be Freddy vs. Jason, simply right? And the studios couldn't agree, so they just had to be like, let's have a character have special abilities and make up this Tina chick who has had looking to get a power. Is like, I don't know, like Magneto or some shit. I don't know. Or Carrie, basically. Uh, it would have been interesting if for that Tina was a bit more interesting character. And she is, right? The only interesting thing about her is her power. She does kind of moan and cry a lot, and I get it. She has her emotions are not in check. It's, it's a problem, but kind of like, oh, God, I don't, I don't want to see this. Can we show off her powers, and it does be, you know, it does, be, she does show it off, but it's only as, you know, e emotional, like, points and her psychiatrist pushing her to a limit. So, Paramount was still so high on Freddy versus, I mean, Jason versus Blank. Marketing angle that they substitute Freddy Krueger for a Stephen King inspired character, like Carrie, and a troubled teenager named Tina Shepard, based on Carrie White, yeah. According to New Blood screenwriter Dear Haney, this, con this concept was more or less came about due to the last second idea thrown out during a story pitch. An actual crosser would have been possible as Metro Groundy Mayor owned the film rights King's novel Carrie. So yeah, Paramount was like, we still want something supernatural or like something to face Jason. Let's fuck it. Fuck it, dude. Fuck it. Let's fucking do this. I guess one thing I'll last mention is that Keenard did all of his stunts in the film, including falling through a stairway and having a porch fall on his head. One thing I will say, I will say about the stunts, they look a bit scary. Sketchy. They had a roof fall on his head. That sounds really sketchy, if you ask me. Honestly, like I'm surprised he isn't dead. A full roof falling on his head, falling through stairs is a normal day. But that roof scene, like that looks fucking sketchy, man. I don't know how he, why he agreed. Or obviously, from he loved doing it. But that shit looked sketchy and rough, if you ask me. Actually, I like this will be the last one. Kane Hodder said that he had difficulty with the scene where he kills the camper in his sleeping bag by bashing her into a tree because the dummy inside was heavier than he thought it would be. The scene required a number of retakes, so he kept swinging it hard. As he could, but no matter how hard he swung, a sleepy bag could not get it to look right. By the final take, he was so fed up with the situation that after he dropped the bag, he kicked angrily. This is the shot that appears in the final film. In retrospect, King Hodder said that was one of his favorite kills in quotation marks. He literally creates the Jason X. Yeah, that's the part one of the only good kills in this movie where he kills a you know sleeping bag person and swings it through a tree. Apparently it was to be way more bloodier, but obviously it was cut. But even without the blood, it's a cool kill. It's a cool, creative, and just good looking kill. And it sucks a little bit more bloodier. But yeah, apparently he got so mad, <laughs> so pissed off. He's like, fuck this. Kick the shit out of this goddamn bag. So we meet this girl named Tina Shepard. And she hears her parents arguing like any normal parents would. Normal. Quotations. And she says, go out on the pier. She accidentally kills her father. Making him moving the whole like pier thing and killing him in the incident. Ten years later, she's like young adult. Maybe teenager. She meets a group of kids her age. There's the one friend that's there. Cute looking guy that's into her. And the one character that's mean. That is the complete bitch who who I love in this movie. But, you know, she, her mother will go back to where, you know, she was 10 years earlier because a psychiatrist is there and wants to help her and squad help her. And, you know, there's these scenes where he's, like, trying to help her. Like, you know, this is, like, your emotional attacking. Like, whenever she gets emotional, that's where her powers comes in. She can never do her powers on point. And he's trying to figure that out. And every time she fails and she, like, almost kills him and shit, throws a fucking TV at him and something on fire. And so, doing so, she feels sad. She just go on the pier. And she thinks of her dad, not knowing that Jason is in the same thing like Tommy or Tommy and his girl killed him in a prison movie. So thinking of her dad, she like does something in the water and accidentally brings back Jason. He has a cool look to Jason. So now we have Tina and Jason to worry about. While doing so, she meets some of the other characters. The mean girls, like she devises a plan to mess with her. The nice girl, right? Because she's gotta be mean, right? And so there's a one point. Is there a one point? I don't even know. There's one point. They they do confront each other, but it's so just kind of like, okay, I don't care about this because your acting is horrible. I was like, whatever. Just let Jason kill this girl menacingly. please. Actually, when I was thinking of this mean girl, I was like, please let Jason fuck her up. <laughs> And it does happen slightly, right? When he does the axe thing to the famous video game cover for the game, axes her head and throws her off. That was kind of satisfying. It was a decent kill. It was 
kind of satisfying. It was still like, yes, but damn it, I want to be more bloody. But I digress. Turns out this psychiatrist guy has been like a phony and drugging Tina for like her powers or something. Her mother doesn't like that. So then they go into the woods. They run out into the goddamn woods a lot, by the way. Uh, he sees Jason kills her mother. He did, He's a fucking snake and a rat. Runs away and lets her mother die like a fucking pussy. And in doing so, he gets killed for it, which is good, which is great. Again, while that's happening, she has lovely, lovely W with this cute guy. And then it, it comes to the time where it's Tina slash Carrie versus Jason. And it's actually one of the better parts of the movie. And like her, like her powers just come in. Her powers is like just on point. It's like, I now have to do my powers on point because my mother has died. You're hurting my so-called boyfriend. And you kill my psychiatrist. Now I'm going to get you, Jason. So yeah, they actually have a pretty decent fight where she fucking makes a pool fell on him in this water. And I think electrocutes him. He gets back up. They go into the woods. They get into the house. The whole staircase falls down. She does that. <laughs> He breaks his mask and he, he yells at her and grunts at her. She like hangs him at one point. That was awesome. They get out. He drops a fucking roof on him. Bam. He gets down. And then they get to the pier. The pier part. Where she decides to call for her father. She like resurrects him or something. Fucking gets him. Drags Jason in the lake. And that's why they defeat him. And it's kind of like, what the fuck was that? J I thought Tina was going to at least have her defeat him. And she kind of did. But this ending's fucking dumb. In fact, there's an even more dumb ending in like the next movie. But I'll get to that when I get to that. This movie's dumb. Why? So her father kills or defeats Jason. And it's just dumb. It's so stupid. I guess it makes sense for Tina. But it was like, I did not want to see Jason be defeated by this. Neutered or fucking kills. Cool looking Jason. Cool fight at the end. But could have not save this movie at all. It's not good. And, and it's actually it's a wasted concept they could have actually had fun with this concept of a girl who has powers facing jason but issue is they just never do anything with her they use it for emotional weight which is fine and she just mopes around and starts crying a lot and the actress can't really act and it's just a lot of wasted potential it is what it is kind of like dumbfounded by that ending her father coming out of the lake and so-called defeating him that, that was not i was like what the fuck is this i'm, I'm watching like bad fan fiction it's, it sounds like bad fan fiction honestly let's just do some bullshit with him why not yeah overall friday 13 part 7 the new blood is bad this is probably the only bad movie this is not it's not my favorite it's not good yeah i definitely would not recommend it it's not a good movie hopefully the next movie is good because the next movie is friday 13 part 8 jason takes manhattan